Hey everybody, welcome to Gen Monthly, 2000, January 2017 edition. Uh, this is John Spaulding. I'm working on the back end of the production tonight, and I'm going to pass it off to Sean, who's going to give us a little bit of an introduction and rundown on our agenda, and then we will talk a little bit about uh, the Global Engagement Network and get into our first panel discussion. Yeah, thanks, John. Well, again, welcome to Gen Monthly. What does a 21st century media cooperative look like? We have some great panelists we'll be talking to you later. Uh, first, we're going to quickly go through, uh, you know, an introduction of the Global Engagement Network, or GEN, uh, reading of our mission and vision, and, you know, a summarizing of our principles just very briefly. Then we'll introduce panelists and do a quick, uh, you know, two-minute uh, per question sort of uh, Q&A with them on the topics that we'll, you know, have up uh, be on the uh, agenda. And then we'll do a little public Q&A for those that uh, remain. And after that, we'll break out into groups and talk amongst ourselves and come up with some more questions to bring back to the, the, the main group. And then we'll talk about what we heard and, you know, say goodbye. And lastly, we'll actually do a... Um, a formulation of all the notes that we've taken and send out something for everyone to look at about, uh, you know, a future planning and, you know, things that also that could come about from uh, a great meeting like this. So that will be the uh, basic run through and that will take us around to 530. Uh, that would be 530 Pacific time. So first we will go to John and he will give us a uh, brief run through of our uh, introduction of Jen and our uh, main principles, mission and vision. Great. Thanks, Sean. Um, mm -hmm. The mission of the Global Engagement Network places the power of information back into the hands of the people with broadcasts that educate, empower, and empower the public through teaching, producing, and facilitating multimedia creations using content and social broadcasting. Um, our vision is that we will change the way we view media by providing people an opportunity to become actively involved. Uh, Jen will honor our past accomplishments while continuing to advance the grassroots movements that came before us in promoting the truth, in promoting the truth and educating our society. These are our five principles, uh, content creation and broadcasting. We believe in, in giving everyone an opportunity to be part of the global conversation. Um, Member-driven open media cooperative. All members agree to abide by the cooperative principle, as well as the organization's mission and core values. And paying or paying or contributing members of the cooperative determine the content of the material uh, produced and the distribution of, of uh, surplus. Fair and livable working conditions for employees. Each employee makes a wage that's relative to their time capacity and funds accumulated through participation. Commitment to social transfer, transformation, excuse me, the Global Engagement Network Cooperative will promote a model of organization for media that fosters equality, skill sharing, and community, uh, and collaboration and interdependence. We're only one piece to the puzzle, only through coalition and collaboration with other entities that share our core values can we carry out our mission and vision. So with that, I will head it back to you, Sean, and, and say a little bit more about our panelists and get us going. Absolutely. Thank you, John. Yeah, well, right now we have uh, two of our panelists showed up. Uh, that's Armin Averam and Tim Black. So I thank you very much, both of you, for being here. Um, we are also waiting. Uh, hopefully, Anoa J. Chenga Esquire will be joining us shortly and Nicole Sandler as well. Until then, we will definitely uh, you know, be talking to you two and we're very glad to have you here. So thank you both. Um, we know that Avram is actually on a little bit of a time constraint, and that's great. We're very glad to have him. So we will actually be going to you first, sir, and um, I guess we can go right into the panel, if that's all right with everyone. Uh, so first of all, uh, how are you doing, Armin? <laughs> uh, well, it's a pretty intense news cycle that we're dealing with right now. So I'm, I'm trying to absorb as much as I can and keep moving forward. Yeah, absolutely. I hear that. Well, um, why don't you tell us a little bit about it yourself uh, briefly so everyone knows uh, your background. Sure. Uh, I mean, I live here in New York. I was a music teacher for a long time, and then I decided to go back to school a, a couple of years ago to get my MBA because I didn't want to teach anymore. And one of my professors was the president of Now This. And after Bernie Sanders decided to run for president, I started volunteering for him on a local level in New York. 
Um, and I emailed my professor to let him know that the videos that now this did with Bernie Sanders were helping me to register people to vote because they were such great videos. And then I ended up just coming in for an interview at the company a few weeks later and, and they gave me a job there. And over time, I produced a lot of content uh, related to the Sanders campaign. And then eventually I, I interviewed the senator uh, in October, about a month before the election. So that was kind of like a peak peak moment for me. And now I'm uh, just trying to get ready to produce uh, content dealing with the Trump opposition. Absolutely. Well, you'll be staying busy and that's a good thing uh, as far as, I mean, considering the situation, uh, we can't ask for more than just people being on board, right? So what does independent media mean to you uh, being in that you know role? Well, I, I don't necessarily think that I, I work for independent media. I mean, it's mm -hmm. it's somewhere in between, maybe. I'm not sure how to really define it. It's definitely a newer progressive outlet. So you wouldn't necessarily think of it as like an establishment media in the way you think of CNN as establishment media. Sure. So, you know, there are younger, newer companies that, you know, I guess it just depends on your definition of indie media. But uh, I think media in general is at a turning point right now where the, the trust in media is at such an all time low that someone like Donald Trump can use that against uh, his opposition. Uh, so what I've just been thinking about the past couple months is how do you restore trust in the media? And independent journalists have an opportunity to do that because so, so many people are turned off by establishment or, or so-called mainstream media that they really are looking for alternatives that are either local or that they feel that they can trust because it's just from ordinary people that don't have a, a, another agenda. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. So, I mean, that's kind of going to the next question, which is, you know, while combating the fight against the free press, is there anything any media or anyone that's operating in that gray area can do to increase influence, you know, on maybe especially those that are paying more attention to, you know, just cable or just one niche place that's not giving them the full news coverage, I guess. You're saying what are the advantages of, of that? Or, or is there anything particular that now this is doing or that can be done to combat that? Um, well, I mean, now this and other outlets have a certain formula as far as, you know, making things digestible and shareable online. You know, so over time you kind of learn, you know, what should you put at the beginning of a video to grab the attention of the viewer? You know, there's a real science to it, which is why certain outlets have been able to be, you know, be successful. Sure. Um, you know, I think it's just, you know, people are really into authenticity right now. So if you have an authentic voice, it doesn't really matter how big you are as an outlet. You, you'll see someone like Tim Black, for example, that I found out about during the election or other, uh, you know, just independent journalists that really have a strong voice. So people start to follow them. You know, they follow you on Twitter. They follow you on Facebook and you build your following. It's like becoming like a, a songwriter or an artist, you know, you just have to build a fan base. And I think people are responding nowadays to very honest, authentic uh, content that has a real strong voice. Well, I suppose that kind of answers the next question, which is how do you combat fake news? And is it worth combating? I mean, you're hearing some reports that maybe it's not as influential as everyone worries it is, but what, what do you say to that? I don't know. I mean, I think it's pretty scary. And, yeah. you know, no matter how much fake news there actually is, the fact that Trump will use it as a weapon yeah. makes it scarier because then it makes people afraid to find the truth. And then it just really destroys these institutions that need to be there to check on the government. So if you have no watchdog, and no one is, is telling the American people what the government is doing, I mean, then we're really getting into, you know, a real fascist kind of North Korea-like dictatorship where, you know, hopefully it won't get that extreme. But at this point, I don't know. Who the fuck knows? It's never been more possible or it seemed more possible than, than it does now. It's yeah. certainly true. There's, there's almost the idea that... 
of course it, it's going to the social media aspect that everyone's getting their their stuff from facebook and sort of that sort of thing but now this is almost it, it takes that and is running with it do you think is that something that you guys have consciously done that i mean obviously you're you you're a digital media uh and so you're obviously you're aiming to produce stuff for facebook but have you you know consciously gone after you know that sort of um medium knowing that it's going to grow and grow and grow i mean i mean i'm not part of the strategy at the company sure. i just produce for a channel but i can say that uh i think our politics page in particular really grew i, I would give a lot of credit to this progressive movement that just started that popped up out of nowhere and i really saw it as an opportunity to really um you know you know, years from now, we'll have these videos to go back to, to really make a record of this unbelievable movement that was happening. So every, every day that I would come to work, especially during the Sanders campaign, and even now, but during his campaign, it was, it was all, so to me, it was like, can you believe what's happening? Like this democratic socialist is, is really close to getting the democratic nomination. And then on the other side, you had Trump, you know? So, you know, at the same time, I'm trying to highlight the good, that's happening right now. I'm also trying to remind people that this guy is a complete maniac. So right now, what I tell people is this is the same country that would have voted for Bernie had he been the, the nominee in the general election. So as dark as things seem right now, I just remind people that we could have gone a completely different way and we're still that same country. So don't lose faith in just the people as a whole, because I think we all really are in this together. If we can just battle through for the next four years, I'm, you know, I'm trying to stay optimistic, I guess. No, that's a great outlook. Yeah. I, you know, you've got to, everyone plays their role, but that's, it's essential for us to stay optimistic. And that way we don't lead to, you know, being jaded about the whole process and disengaging. Right. Yeah. Uh, well, this leads to the final question, um, and this is about the free and open internet. So what is the state of corporate and mainstream media and its influence on independent voices on an open and free internet? And lately, this has come back into the news, so it's timely. Yeah, it, that's a great question. Um, you know, corporate media obviously has a corporate agenda, so they're going to look for you know, potential candidates maybe in the Democratic Party that will, that they can work with, you know, so the, the, it, this is really a question of, of how the Democratic Party either comes together or it splits up. Um, but you're going to have independent media on the side of the progressive candidate or the independent candidate who's not on the side of corporate America. And then you're going to have the corporate media that will be on the side of maybe someone more like a Cory Booker or establishment type Democrat. Um, so those, you know, those are the opposing factions within the media. Um, but I have hope because I think the young people of this country are, they don't, they don't know what CNN is. They don't give a shit about MSNBC and all that stuff. So they are looking for independent media and it's become kind of like this cool and hip thing to get into especially with these protests and the marches. If you get good footage of a march or, or, or a protest, you can get a million views just on your, your Facebook page or your YouTube page, you know? So anyone can use that to, you know, springboard into, you know, independent journalists. And don't feel that you have to be, that you need to be a huge independent journalists. It's more about just getting media out to the people at this point. Yeah, it's almost, you know, that's, I think, maybe a, also helps combat fake news and the fact that if you get so much of a certain thing, you start being able to, uh, at some point you can get drowned in it, but it also shows you like, oh, okay, there's more people doing this than ever. So some of them must be, you know, it must actually be happening. They must be happening for the right reasons. I mean, you could see that with the Women's March. It's one thing to have them individualized, but the more we come together as a group, the more it actually helps. Um, us trust each other you know even if we're not actually the in the same group we're all progressive and we're in these different progressive groups that need to stick together mm -hmm. all right well armin thank you very much for coming and ch chatting with us um we'll of course be putting this out uh on the internet later and you know your segment with will be out there and we'll share that with uh, everyone and again thank you very much for being here and Thanks, um, man. 
Tell everyone, so uh, what, uh, what's the uh, website? Is it nowthis.com, correct? So it's, yeah, we don't really use the website. It's facebook.com okay. slash nowthispolitics. Okay. And then on, on Twitter, it's now this news. On Instagram, it's now this news. All right. Well, thank you very much. I know that you need to get off and uh, you're a busy man and it's a busy time of year. So go on and keep doing your thing. And thank you again for um, joining us. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Take care. Thank you very much. Yep. All right. Well, that was very great. Uh, you know, now we're going to go ahead and move along to our another panelist that I'm very happy to have here. And that's Tim Black. How are you doing, sir? Hey, what's going on, Sean? How are you doing, brother? Oh, very well. You know, uh, considering we were hanging in there and just keep fighting, right? That's right, man. That's all you can do is keep fighting. Can't yeah. give up. Can't all give right. up, brother. Yep. So why don't you go and uh, tell everyone a little bit about yourself, a little background. Uh, well, uh, let's see. My name is Tim Black. Of course, I have a show called The Tim Black Show. I do coffee with Tim Black. Uh, I saw a big uptick uh, this past election, but I had been doing online commentary, online digital content for about three years before uh, the race began. Uh, big time Bernie supporter uh, was alerted by a number of my viewers. We have a community called the Tim Black Wolfpack, and they told me about Bernie. And that's how I got active. And that's how I met Sean and a lot of other folks, and Lee Camp, and Nicole Sandler, and everybody. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's fantastic, man, just producing content and trying to get trying to get real news or the, the people's uh, side of the news out to the world. Awesome. All right, well, let's go right into it. So what does independent media mean to you, Tim? Wow. <laughs> well, independent, in its truest sense to me, are folks who are not tied to any corporation, meaning Accept your corporation. If you want to incorporate yourself, go right ahead. But not be holding to sponsorships, not be holding to boards and uh, gatekeepers and establishment folks who say, hey, you can't say that. Don't say that. Get that out of here. You know, um, that's what independent media is. It's just no buffer between the people. We are the people. We are the people. We are not figureheads. We are we are you. Yeah, well, it's simple enough, right? And, you know, but unfortunately, it's something that we've come a long way for, you know, the ones with the most influence uh, are the furthest from that right now. And so that's where uh, we've had to kind of pick up the slack and try and do it online and digitally. And so uh, what does the, uh, what can be done to, to strengthen independent media, do you think? Uh, you know, I'm sure we've already started doing some of it, but uh, what else can we do? Well, uh, for anyone who's interested in doing indie media, I'd say go for it. Yeah. You know, just had a tenacity. You have to be stubborn, you know, big time. Like you, <clears throat> when the views are down, when, when everything's against you, when you feel like no one's watching, that's when you got to push hardest. Um, yeah. You don't, you know, independent media typically are underfunded or no funded or self-funded. So that's an issue, right? So what you have to do, what I've done is you have to... Uh, you have to diversify your content. You have to cover more than just one brand. So let's say, let's say for if you're an indie person out there and you're trying to get started, let's say you want to talk about the environment. Okay. That's great stuff. Talk about the environment, but also to raise awareness, you have to make what I call commercials. And those commercials are in the form of social commentary on other issues. See, my whole thing, guys, and I'm giving this away. This is, this is, this is primo stuff, guys. All right. My whole thing is you have to broaden your audience. If we only talk to each other, what are we doing? Right? Chamber, so, yeah. You get what I'm saying? Echo yeah. chamber, right? Yeah. If I only talk to progressives, who am I helping? There are a lot of progressives out there. If you're a progressive, you watch. There's several people who, who know, who get it. Kyle Kalinske, um, Gosh, uh, uh, now nah, I name one person. Got to name a bunch of people, right? Nicole Sandler. Like there are a lot of people. If you're in this, if you're in this genre, right? Um, but if you want to really push the envelope and you really want to blow up and you really want to make some noise and you really want to help people, you got to talk to conservatives. You got to talk to liberals. You got to talk to the gooey middle. And and the way I do that is by, uh, like I said, do social commentary on other issues that are more mainstream. And then once they like you. Once they trust you, start slowly introducing them to your real stuff, right? And that real stuff is the thing you care about most, which for me would be equality, uh, 15, $15 minimum wage, which would be the environment, which would be, you know, um, a myriad of issues. I'm a progressive at, at heart. So that's what I do. 
So when the free press comes into this question, uh, it's, it seems interesting to me that they, you know, so much of what the uh, mainstream media was and, and traditional media outlets were doing were that they were so embedded that, it, it, but they stopped covering and started becoming you know, a little too friendly with everyone. Obviously, they wanted to just uh, it became having being part of the pack. And so now that you know there's actually this fight against free press, it almost seems like they're being forced to go back to the perspective of not necessarily being in, internal in their investigations, but actually reporting on it from the outside like all the rest of us have to. And so that actually just levels, you know, does that, do you think that brings the independent media even closer to, you know, the influence that the rest of them have? I'm a very happy man, son. <laughs> <laughs> does that answer the question, man? Look, I look Absolutely. at it like these guys, like all of this, when they, when they say free press, I, I don't even know who they're talking about, right? The free press, they say CNN, MSNBC. I heard Armin. Armin made some very good points, and I, I agree with him. Um, it's, it's time for us to change up. We've just become, like, I've become aware of the collusion between poli politicians, political parties, and the media this election cycle. But I got a feeling this has been going on for a long time, brother. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so, you know, just because you discover, you know, I just discovered that I like, I don't know, uh, quinoa, right? But, okay. like, people have been eating quinoa for a long time. Sure. So th that's where we are, right? So so I don't, I don't shed a tear for what's going on with CNN, MSNBC, corporate media. Let, I'm glad the field is being leveled. Now it's our opportunity more than ever. This is a great time for you to get started. Anyone out there? to speak truth. Awesome. Well, what does uh, fake news to mean to you? Uh, you know? I think, you know what, fake news, um, when you deliberately lie, which is what a lot of media does. Sure. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, well, and well, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me put it this way. A lie may not be, okay, the sky is purple, right? A lie can be, the sky, the sky is, you know, this tell you one aspect of the sky without giving you the full, the full context of a story. That to me is fake news if you want to be technical, right? So if you know, if you're aware of a fact that you're leaving out because it's not pleasing or pleasant to the people that, that pay your bills or the, or whatever, that to me is fake news. I hate to, you know, and, and that, I don't think that's being a purist. I think that is, I feel like we have an obligation to give all truth. So when so we we should be telling we should for instance Donald Trump's ban okay Donald Trump ban on the Muslims I feel like we should also say hey you know let's get some context to this in 2011 Obama banned Muslims from Iraq for six months and then tell you can still tell it now you have context but he lifted it and he didn't include all these countries and or whatever but I think we're being just they're being disingenuous and now there's blowback and they need to shape up. So I'm good with it. So, yeah, I mean, essentially, it seems that, you know, fake news is completely, I mean, I guess you can't, maybe you can switch one term for the other, but how much of it is just for propaganda sakes? I mean, if they're intentionally doing it, right? I mean, essentially, it's just propaganda. They want, I mean, we know they've been, you know, Exxon Mobil did it when it came to climate change. You know, the sugar industry did it when it came to, you know, facts, you know, and, and so these are just what corporations do. They try and change public opinion through fake news, propaganda, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Well, so here's the next question. This is a big one, man. Uh, so, you know, what is the, with the state of corporate and mainstream media, and what is the influence on an open and fair internet? And, you know, especially when it comes to uh, independent media who, you know, we thrive on this form. It's the last open, you know, you can say what you want. And again, like we were talking about earlier, uh, you're not necessarily having someone that's telling you what to do. You, you can incorporate yourself and, you know, run with the wind. Definitely, man. Um, I, I'm trying to get your question. So you're saying, what's the effect of what's going on with corporate media, how that affects independent yeah. media? Yeah, yeah I, I was all over the place with the question. It's all right. No, yeah. So what is the influence of independent voices like, you know, you, me and Nicole Sandler and the Humanist Report, you know, on uh, yeah, 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 all those great people. Uh, yeah. um, wow, man. This is like I said, this is our time, brother. This yeah. is our time to shine. And under this. So, you know, there are good and bad things that come from the Trump situation. I heard what our man, our man said about Trump and I get it and I agree with him. But I also look at the opportunity within it. 
uh, those people would have very likely had voted for Bernie Sanders if given the opportunity, right? If they would have had that option, but they had the option between Hillary and, and Trump. I think that Trump being in office now and, and the negative negativity, right? People are waking up, and if and and it would only continue more so under Trump than it would Hillary. And I strongly feel that way. I feel that right now is a very special time to be doing this, and and and. Even though I don't like the methods that I'm seeing Trump, you know, implore, employ, right? We're going to benefit from it because we're going to still be there. If you can stand the pain and stand the rain and keep producing content, people will find you. You know, I got a video I did a couple of weeks ago on Steve Harvey. One of those commercial videos I told you about, it got 2 million views. You know, I grew 10 million, excuse me, 10,000 followers more on Facebook in, a, in like three days. So opportunities are there, guys, yeah. uh, to reach people. And now I'm going to talk to them about Standing Rock, right? Right? Because now they're here, and and that's the deal, man. So so there's good in in within the bad that we've been dealing with. Absolutely, that's a great point. That you, you absolutely can bring people in that aren't necessarily going to want to stay for you know the the deep the weeds, but you you can get them there by trusting them by becoming their friend, becoming someone that they can, they know because automatically when it comes to fake news, is this guy bullshitting me? I don't know. Who knows? But after you get to, you know, you get to know him or, you know, a little, and yeah. you, you give people that part of yourself as a, as a, as a broadcaster and they, they, uh, in return start, you know, listening to, to the more, the, the stuff that you believe a little more passionate about that's a little deeper. So yeah, that's absolutely. I mean, yeah. um, the, a lot of people, we, we often wonder why do, why do the masses believe the Don Lemons, the Rachel Maddow's, the Chris Hayes's, all these folks? Well, they've developed relationships over years. It's like a member of their family. You know, so when you, you know, so of course they believe them until they're giving, until they develop other relationships and then they find out other things. And so that's our job. We have to do the hard work. Um, these people, you know, whether we disagree with them or not, and I sure as hell do, right? We got to give them that. They have staying power. They have been there. They have been doing the work. So we have to do the work as well. We can't just say, hey, I'm the truth. Look at me. No, you got to put the time in just like they did. And you'll build those relationships too. And, and, and you'll grow. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Tim. Uh, that's uh, all we have as far as questions go. Uh, if you're able to stick around, that'd be great. Uh, if not, uh, we appreciate you stopping by and yeah, man, I gotta, I gotta cook dinner. It's uh, right. eight o'clock here on the East Coast, almost, right? Sweet. Yeah, no, I, I have understand. soda on the stove, man. But thank you so much for okay. having me, John. I appreciate you, brother. And don't burn it, man. No, go, go, go. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, and we'll talk soon. You got it, man. All right, take care. You too. Thanks, Tim. You got it, Nicole. All right, All right. is uh, is Nicole? Nicole, I'm here. Hello, hello, hello. Thanks for coming, Jim. <laughs> Sorry for being late. No, no worries. We're glad you made it. Uh, we appreciate you coming. And um, why don't actually, why don't we start just with a little background for everyone? Oh boy, uh, how long do you have? I've been in radio for um, longer than you've probably been alive. <laughs> I know. I hate to say that, but uh, yeah, it's true. So I, I'm one of those people who actually, you know, studied broadcasting in college. Um, I um, and, and spent most of my career, I worked in, in talk radio right out of college in New York, uh, WMCA. And from there, moved into music radio where I spent the bulk of my career. Moved out to Los Angeles uh, in 87. I did radio, music radio for 15 years out there. Uh, wound up back home in South Florida where I live now, um, <laughs> where I lived, uh, you know, where I grew up. And um, it, it started back into talk radio, um, I don't know, 10 years ago now or so. I was uh, uh, doing the morning show on WINZ in Miami, which was one of the Air America affiliates, uh, right during the 2008 primary election. Okay. And in fact, they, um, uh, I, I was fired the Friday after my show, the Friday before the Democratic Convention, which was just lovely. And so, um, yeah, yeah, they replaced me with IMIS, of all people, on a progressive talk station, uh, uh, just because they were getting ready to flip to sports, because Miami really needed a fourth sports talk station. 
and <clears throat> um, they had to wait out the Fox Sports contract of another station. So they brought, they took the I Must Show. This is how corporate mainstream media works um, uh, on a progressive talk station for six months because they got it for free until they could run out the clock. Then they just changed the format of the station. So thank you, Claire Channel. Um, uh, after that, I wound up moving to Air America. I was doing their late night show after, after being their fill-in person. I wound up at 11 p.m. at night 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. Eastern, and uh, did that for well until <laughs> until uh, Air America went off the air. In fact, Air America went off the air. Oh shoot, we missed the anniversary. I don't know how. Oh, because we were hung up with the inauguration. Go figure. Uh, it was January 21st, 2010. That was the day that the Supreme Court ruled on Citizens United, basically upending 100 years of settled campaign finance laws, uh, saying corporations are people, my friend. And um, uh, I, I was going to go on the air that night to talk about that. And about five o'clock in the afternoon, I found out that um, it not only was money speech, but speech was dead, at least my speech, because Air America Radio uh, went off the air. So that was January 21st, 2010. That night, instead of going on Air America at 11 p.m., I flipped on, uh, at the time I was doing, a, it was simulcasting on Ustream and just went live there. And basically I've been doing my show online ever since. So uh, I've been 100% listener supported. Um, I was doing it at my radio or not.com, which was my thing. And now it's, I've made it easier to remember at NicoleSandler.com. I'm now on from a 10 to, well, <laughs> I'm going back to my old days. I was on 10 to noon Eastern, um, weekdays until, oh, um, the end of August, uh, after I was diagnosed with lung cancer this summer, I took a hiatus of had surgery, had half my lung removed. Lovely thing. And so I came back. I couldn't sit on the sidelines watching this election happen. So I actually came back on, I think, three weeks before um, election day. And, uh, and yeah, and, and, and now I'm on just about four hours a week from uh, to three to four Eastern, Tuesday through Friday. And I'm on NicoleSandler.com. And I'm also heard on the Progressive Voices Network. So you are independent media. You're, oh, you're I, the, yeah, I'm you're the definition. Percent. That's it. So, That's it. It, it, I mean, what does it mean to you? I mean, you pretty much just described it. It's, uh, it, it, do you have anything to add about, you know, what independent media means as far as, you know? <laughs> well, you know, I'm not even aligned with, uh, well, I guess, well, I'm, I'm carried by progressive voices, but I'm sitting here in my own home studio. Um, I have my own website. I'm 100% listener supported. And in fact, I'm so independent that I, I, I literally do everything myself. I mean, I have a, if you want to hear it, I have a little, one of my show intros, um, uh, bait here. I'll just play it for you. When Nicole Sandler sits down to do her show, she's the producer, booking the guests, pulling the audio, planning the show, the engineer, running the controls, troubleshooting any problems, playing the sounds, calling the guests. And she's the webmaster, writing the blog, posting the podcast, maintaining the website, not to mention the host, interviewing the guests, explaining the issues, giving opinions, and calling out the bad guys. And then you get the Nicole Sandler show on NicoleSandler.com. So, uh, that's really independent. I don't <laughs> I, don't staff, I don't have anybody. So when something fucks up, it's all on me. Yeah, no. Well, that's perfect. That's exactly why. And it, that we know that when we're listening to you, we're getting you. There's no one, you know. No. Perfect. And, but, you know, by the same token, there's nobody, um, uh, you know, nobody tells me what I can or can't talk about. I, I you know, it, I, I'm able to bring voice to um, I think what an average person is feeling right now, because I've been on the roller coaster that this country is, um, and uh, I hope I do it in an entertaining and informative way. See, here's 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 where I put on my um, I've been doing this too long hat, um, and, and and there's a danger in that you know the internet has been the great equalizer. Anybody with a you know microphone and a decent internet connection can do a show can do a radio show. Um, now, this is, you know, a lot of people are so, well, a lot of people don't even use the term radio anymore because it's new media. It's, it's a new 
thing. Um, I'm old school. I'm old and I come from radio. So I hope I'm putting out, you know, uh, I want it to be informative. Um, we are 100% fact based, like real facts, like when fact meant fact. Uh, in my world, it still does. Um, and uh, but but I want it to be entertaining first and foremost. I want I want the listeners to know that if they do tune in, yeah, they're going to get a um, you know they're they're going to be entertained. But everything they hear is going to be true. I'm not going to bullshit them. Um, they may not agree with me. And sometimes if somebody calls in and and uh, you know, disagrees with me. Uh, well, for instance, here's a good example. Um, right after the election, or even it was before the election, uh, I had people, some people who are Bernie Sanders supporters, allegedly say that after, uh, you know, after Bernie endorsed Hillary, well, we'll forget it, I'm voting for Trump. I had one guy say this to me and I, you know, after trying to talk reason to him for a moment, I basically told him he was an asshole and, and, and to, you know, <laughs> go away. I was stronger after the election where if you voted for Trump, uh, it, you say you were a Bernie Sanders supporter and you voted for Donald Trump, then you're a fucking moron. And, you know, I have no use for you really because all the shit that's going on now, this is on them. And I have no problem calling people out. I mean, I've told people, don't listen to my show anymore. Go away. I don't want you here. If this is how you think, you're not constructive for our conversation. Just just go. Go away. Because we need people right now who are going to take action. See, now we're in a different territory. Now we need to, you know, I, at the, I, believe me, I, after the election, I was seriously considering um, stopping because it's dangerous to my health. I told you, I... I fought lung cancer this year. Yeah. Uh, I, I battled depression. And that's another thing I'm very open with my audience about. Um, you know, they get me warts and all. And um, I had a really hard time right after the election, as so many of us did. And it hit again last week. I mean, I, I know that um, I don't do a show on Mondays. So the, the inauguration, uh, you know, was um, Friday. Saturday was the Women's March, which was awesome. I was down here in Miami. Um, uh, Sunday, I got really sick and I wound up in the emergency room. And Monday, I lied in bed all day. And, and part of it was physical, but part of it was um, my head exploding, I think. I really couldn't believe in two days, you know, we saw, we saw the, 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 the diminution of the truth. We saw, you know, Sean Spicer come out and belittle that office, you know, get up in front of the media and say, who are you going to believe me or your lying eyes? Here are the pictures and hello, we know what we saw. And he's telling us that, you know, up is down and, and red is blue and well, actually not that green is purple. Um, you know, it, it's saying reality doesn't matter anymore. And, I, it, you know, I, I'm just having a real hard time coping with it, but I've realized is I'm certainly far from alone and seeing the protests that have sprung up in the last 24 hours in relation to the the travel ban is really heartening it's like okay yes I'm feeling this it's hurting but but I'm there are millions of me you know there are so many people out in the streets right now I I couldn't be happier about that because I think I think there's so many so much power in our numbers so what can be done to build the strength of independent media, increase, you know, increase our influence while combating what you just mentioned, which is, you know, the fight, the, the battle against the free press now? Well, here's the thing. We need to realize that we're all on the same side. I, we're on the side yeah. of the truth, right? And disseminating information and helping to wean people off of their uh, mainstream corporate media habit because that's all they've had before. And I'm not saying don't listen to them. Look, I watch the Sunday shows. I need to hear what these people are saying. Where I turn it off is, you know, I'll watch the news if it's news. What's useless are those stupid panel discussions with the Jeffrey Lords and the Kaylee McInnes and the, oh my God, where do they find these people? I don't give a shit what they think. Um, so, I mean, on my show, I, I try to get guests who I can learn something from. So who adds something to the conversation? The other part of it is that um, we need to support one another. I put up 
back, uh, you know, in uh, the opposite world thing has been going on for a while. Uh, the Trump just took it to new levels. Um, and, you know, I've been pushing back against the corporate mainstream media for a long time. Uh, the right likes to talk about the liberal media. <clears throat> Where? <laughs> Show me where it is and I'll go. It doesn't exist. It's a myth. And so um, I started this list that is now morphed into the liberal dot media. It's a it's actually a page on my website, but you can get there like that. And it's a directory. It's got um, uh, you know channels like the Progressive Voices channel, um, uh, the Young Turks, you know, a few uh, others, FYI Nation, a few other uh, you know twenty four seven channels. It's got shows. I'll have to add you to the list. I'm on there. Tim Black's on there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, Ben Dixon, um, uh, Richard Esk. I mean, there are tons of shows like ours. And I think it's up to us to promote each other because, look, we need to build our network. I have a problem with some hosts who are doing this, who, you know, it's it's me, me, me. Um, it needs to be us. It's like Bernie. Uh, it's not me. It's us. It's we. We. We are in this together, and we need to have a big, uh, not maybe network, but a community. I mean, we need to forge a community and and promote one another. So the liberal dot media is a first step, and I'm always uh, through the site. You can email me if there are any other suggestions on shows or or websites or networks that should be on there. Awesome. Well, what comes to mind when you hear the term fake news? Um, you know, it's funny. Fake news used to be uh, John Stewart, right? The Daily yeah. Show. Great point. But, yeah. but, but the thing is, it wasn't fake. It was real yeah. news presented in a way that that got people interested who had no interest in watching, you know, the NBC nightly news. Yeah. Um, it was we learned that it, that entertainment was a great way to disseminate information, right? The fake news thing comes from, um, you know, Fox. Uh, for years, I've called them the fake news channel. I've called them phone news. Um, uh, uh, years ago, I said, I got a new slogan for them. They won't, you know, they, they, they won't pay me for it. It's okay. I'll give it to them for free. Fox News, we make shit up. <laughs> because that's what they do. I've been, you know, for years I've been saying this and it was funny then, um, but it's not so funny now because what's happened is they really have brainwashed legions of old people. When you think <sighs> that's what it is, there's a movie out by a woman named Jen Senko. Mm -hmm. It's called The Brainwashing of My Dad or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's about her father who used to be a Democrat. But as he got older and he's retired and he sits home all day and he watches TV and he's glued to Fox and literally he's been brainwashed by Fox to the point where she cannot talk to him anymore. And it's, you know, at first I'm reading, it's like, oh, this is going to be fun. And it wasn't funny. It's really sad. And it's a thing. And that's what happened to Donald Trump. I'm, I firmly believe, first of all, he's got serious um, psychological problems. And I'm not saying that to be glib or cute or funny. Yeah. As one who suffers from psychological problems, I don't make fun of that. Um, it, it, it's serious. And I just, I had a long discussion with someone last night about narcissistic personality disorder and she grew up with it. She said her parents both suffered from it and he's a textbook case. And that's really, truly dangerous. I mean, she asked me what I knew about it. And I said, well, from a layman's point of view, I, I know, but, and she went on to get very specific. He's a dangerous man and he needs help. Um, it, it, but he, he, the fake news thing, they are telling you that the facts that are in front of you are not true. I mean, it's uh, I, it's like um, it, before, you know, long before Trump took power, this is one of the ways that the Republicans and the pundits on the right would push back. You would present them with fact and they'd say, well, I don't believe you. The whole climate change thing. Well, I'm not a scientist, but well, yeah, you're not a scientist, so defer to the fucking scientists who know what they're talking about. But their whole thing was, I don't believe you. That stops a conversation cold because if you don't believe me, well, I got nothing more to say to you. This is what the Trump administration is doing. They're saying those facts, 
we don't believe them. We have alternative facts. That's what Kellyanne Conway was saying is we've got our own set of facts here. And you can believe us. You can say whatever you want. We're going to tell you that it's not true. We don't believe you. That's what fake news is when they make shit up and they present it as fact. I'm not worried about the, you know, the the stupid planted, you know, uh, Hillary Clinton's running a child sex ring out of a pizza place right. in right. Washington, D.C. because it's so blatantly absurd. Mm -hmm. But when they say, well, I don't believe you about climate change. So guess what? We're going to we're going to muzzle the EPA and we're going to close down their Twitter account and they're not allowed to talk to the press anymore. Um. And, you know, uh, we're going to make up our own rules. Oh, and by the way, uh, to media, you need to shut up and just listen. Um, then we've entered really serious territory. I, I think fake news is where we're so far beyond talking about fake news. We got to talk about the constitutionality of trying to shut up the fourth estate. Right. Telling well, the media to shut up. Part of the getting us to shut up is trying to control the internet. So that leads me to the last question, which is what is the state of corporate and mainstream media and the influence on independent voices on a free and open internet? Um, actually, the state of corporate and media is stronger than it's ever been. Dump, and I call him Dump. You know, it's Donald Trump. Um, D apostrophe U M P. It's just a way to shorten his name, right? Because it, it you know, Donald Trump. D apostrophe um Dump. That's so. Oh, that's you know, <laughs> giving him the respect he deserves. Anyway, so Dump's uh, pick to head the FCC is one of its uh, one of net neutrality's biggest foes. Yes. Um, they're going to give corporate America whatever they want. Therefore, you know, I put out my show. I'm on YouTube every day, um, and I'm, uh, you know, I've got my own audio stream, and I'm Progressive Voices, and I'm, all of this is threatened now because um, I won't put my show behind a paywall because I know that there are so many people who are really hurting, and I can't tell them, oh, you can only listen to my show if you pay five dollars a month. I won't do that. Mine is like public radio used to be, where it's <clears throat> it's. Um, uh, listener donations. It's on a, a, you know, honor system. It's a voluntary basis. But um, if they start charging, uh, you know, more to go in the fast lane, basically, if, if they shut down your video stream or they shut down my YouTube or it stutters like we're on an old dial up line because we don't pay the big bounty. And oh, by the way, AOL, uh, you know, podcasts or media, whatever, they can get through fast because they pay the money or they own the pipes. Yeah. Um, we're screwed. So a freepress.net is a good place to start. Awesome. Um, the free, the uh, EFF Foundation, uh, all these groups that are fighting for net neutrality, if you are concerned about the future of the media, um, and independent media like what we're doing here, that's a really big issue. And I know, look, it's tough. We've been hit with a whirlwind over the last 10 days or so from every direction. Oh my God, this issue, that issue, that issue. Um, this is a biggie. If you're concerned about being able to go to your computer or plug in your smartphone or you know listen to streaming radio without corporate influence, um, net neutrality is going to be one you really got to pay attention to. And I know we've got to be active on so many fronts now. Uh, we're being attacked on so many fronts now, but this is a biggie. It's coming down. Yeah, it's, you know, it's all hands on deck. Yeah, <laughs> all right, Nicole, well, thank you very much again for stopping by. We appreciate the conversation. And of course, we'll be cutting into segments and sending it out. And uh, again, it was great to talk to you and you had some great insights. And uh, hopefully we'll um, work together again in the future. Sounds great. Thanks so much for having me. Of course. Thank you very much. Thanks, Bye -bye. Nicole. Thank you. Bye. All right. Well, since we are not having, uh, we don't have any of our panelists were able to stick around, we are going to actually skip the uh, Q&A and go right into the breakout of groups. So what we'll do is we're going to uh, break out into groups no larger than five. Um, actually, it looks like we actually have Anoa here. We might be able to get her in shortly. One moment here. All right, Anoa, you are here. Uh, make sure you're not muted then. Let's see. Hello.
All right, sorry, we have some technical issues going on right now. Um, let's go one more moment here and see if we can bring her in. No, are you there now? Hello. Your lower left hand, there's a mute. One moment, everyone. Sorry, we're hello. trying to bring in. Hello? Hello, hello. hello. Oh, is this a Noah? Oh, yes, this is a Noah. How are you? I'm doing great. How about you? Well, thank you so much for one doing this, and thank you so much for being patient with me. Um, it's been a little while getting back from the airport earlier this evening, so and getting my family settled so I could join you guys. But thank you so much for doing this. No, that's great that you were going down there and representing. That's awesome. I assume you were down at the airport uh, for, you know, the... the, the, the yes, yes, yeah. yes, 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 definitely. I'm here in Atlanta. I was at Atlanta Hartsfield Airport um, right. a little earlier this evening. So that was pretty, that's pretty awesome being able to get out there for a little bit. That's awesome. Well, why don't you go ahead and just give us a brief introduction to yourself and then we'll get right into the panelist questions. Okay, great. Um, my name is Anoa Changa and I have been uh, a part of Indie Media for approximately a year now. I'm an attorney here in Atlanta. Um, I have been involved uh, doing organizing with uh, some grassroots groups for Senator Bernie Sanders campaign um, beginning in 2015 and that led to doing you know some different media interviews and stuff like that and one of my uh, my organizing mentor basically is what I call her she did does a radio show Sunday afternoons called Down South and Dirty she in front of her and they would let me come on and do like a short rundown of things that were going on kind of within the like a, a grassroots report kind of right and it's it, it, it ended up being a mix of political analysis as well, right? Um, on one such on one such call, Benjamin Dixon, the Benjamin Dixon show was the guest, and he heard my rundown and he asked me to come on his show. And pretty much, I think the end. Of, I think it's either the end of this week coming up or next week is my one year anniversary as a contributor to his show. And it's been about six months since I've been doing my own show, The Way with Fanoa. Um, nice. So yeah, so Ben basically had me come on like early February, late January, and the rest, as they say, is in history. So it's been a fascinating experience getting to meet people like Tim Black, um, obviously Benjamin Dixon, and other podcasters, Michael Brooks and Michael Solomon. I mean, there's just so many wonderful people out there and, yeah. and getting to do this stuff and now you. So, um, yeah. Awesome. Well, what does independent media mean to you again? Um. I mean, it means being able to tell our stories on our own terms, but also being to being able to represent um, for 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 our communities, for for people, right? And and being able to send in messaging that is untainted and and, and not tailored to a specific corporate interest. Um, I really do think that there's a variety of information out there that can be found depending upon what people's personal you know taste or style is, but for most of the people that I've seen and interacted with, there's a commitment to, you know, integrity in the process of delivering the news and delivering information, whether it's political commentary or just straight, you know, factual news stories. Um, but that's, it, it, it seems to be, you know, independent media seems to be about getting the information out to the people, you know, as the best way possible without all the interference from bureaucracy and, and corporatists. So. Right. That's that's what it kind of means to me. That's great. Yeah. Well, what do you think can be done to build the strength of independent media and the influence, uh, especially when you know free, free press is being attacked more than in recent, you know, any time I can remember since I've been alive. Right. Right. Great question. And I and I I got to hear most of what uh, Miss Tyler and Nicole Tyler before me mm -hmm. um, had to say about this. And I do agree that you know we do need to work together to 
um, to help bolster each other, you know, you know, we'll come up together. Basically, those who are further ahead, you know, reach back. Those who, you know, are kind of on the same level, work together and, and, and cooperate, you know, collaborate where possible. But I also think that actually getting out there, engaging with people that we're saying that we want to connect with, at least on our local communities, to the best, you know, most best possible extent. But then also there's so many great events. There's so many great people out there who necess- aren't necessarily the people who will get the media, like mainstream media attention. So even networking with local groups and organizations like like tonight, I don't know how I'm going to be able to, where I'm going to find the time to do it. But tonight, being out here in Atlanta, attending, you know, the, 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 the protests, um, tonight here in Atlanta at Hartsfield Airport, you know, listening to the speakers from, we have Project South down here. We have um, the Atlanta chapter of CARE, or well, I think it's the Georgia, it was our Georgia, Georgia head of CARE who spoke earlier today. But I mean, there's, there's, there's people who do work around asylum seekers and refugees. I mean, I, there's so many organizations out here and that's a whole nother audience of people to interact with. And yeah. it's not that you necessarily have to pledge allegiance to any specific groups, but at least beginning to engage with folks, right, whose stories aren't usually told, but definitely have voices that need to be heard. I think that's another way that we grow and support independent media, because a lot of people really are tuning out from, you know, the mainstream regular shows. I had a friend um, share with me a tweet from someone who was just upset because they were watching CNN and they saw a commercial saying that President Trump was under attack and he's doing the right thing, so you need to call and show your support. And there's some people who are outraged by stuff like that. Like, why would CNN let a commercial like that other than the fact that they paid the money? Like, like people want actually integrity in their news and in their commentary. So there are some networking through social media, but really helping each other and lifting up voices, I think, is, is, is a good way for us to at least get started. And then figuring out how can we have local cooperatives I mean, even though we want to kind of have that national reach, we definitely have the opportunity as individuals to have regional brands and, you know, and build that base and loyalty as well. Awesome. That's a great point. And speaking of, uh, you know, lack of integrity, well, what comes to mind when you hear the term fake news? So <laughs> I like what Nicole had to say about fake news and like John, you know, think about John Stewart and stuff like that. I mean, who didn't love The Daily Show, right, when Jon Stewart was hosting? Um, even same thing with, 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 with um, uh, uh, the Colbert Report. I, you know, when I think about fake news, I, I used to think, I think about, like, the tabloid section, right, in the supermarket, like, or, or, or just Saturday Night Live, you know, little sketches, right? right? But, but what we, when, we, when we talk about fake news now, there is an issue with, with stories that are, you know, we have these different sites that have already like that have already put out stories that sound true, but they're not really true. We've seen, we've already seen uh, that stuff happening, right? Especially on social media, you have to go and you have to looking like you say to one of your friends, like, oh, no, 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 that's not a real link. You see that? They're like, oh, but now we have this proliferation of this term fake news being used to denigrate independent media. I mean, we do have the issues that we've seen with, with the new administration um, basically trying to like discount actual facts, things that people have actually experienced, right? Because it doesn't fit their rhetoric, narrative, whatever the case may be. But we've seen since the end of the election cycle, we have seen fake news being used as a label to discourage people from buying into believing and supporting independent media. When, you know, organizations like, even though these are, when we talk about independent media, you know, we're we're talking more about grassroots operations like ours. But even still, when you're thinking about alternative media sources like the Black Agenda Report, like, um, I mean, there's so much counterpunch. There's so many different out there, you know, you know, more of, your, more of your, I guess it's hard to call them print media, but internet-based news sources, right? Mm-hmm. When these, these are the types of outlets that are being labeled because people don't agree with their opinions as being fake. You know, that is a problem. And when you have mainstream outlets like the Washington Post themselves, are the biggest purveyors of this fake news with that story about the Vermont hacking of the electrical grid that ended up not being that at all. Like there, there, there is this war being had on so many different fronts and we have to really be alert, engaging, and we have to be willing to delve into the nuance, right, of what is actually going on. Because I absolutely agree with everything Nicole said, said ahead of me, but also I need people to be open to understanding and to looking for themselves. It doesn't matter what big name on CNN or MSNBC or even one of us. It doesn't matter what we're saying. 
right? You still need to look for yourself and verify what is being said. I try my, I try my best to fact check myself and make sure I'm not telling nobody no BS when I go on air. But at the same time, we all make mistakes. But there's also a concerted effort to have a narrative that skews people away from alternative news sources, away from independent media, to try and pull them back into the mainstream. But the problem has been, we have seen over this election cycle in particular, the way mainstream news has been so focused on whether it's rating or outdoing someone else or having particular narratives that they have really constricted the ability for people to get actual information and value from from what's supposedly the news. Um, yeah. So. No, yeah, that's very true. There's, and you know, speaking of like one part of the internet that's not great is the fact that you can form these silos where you're just, you know, hearing echo chambers of your own opinions, right? But right. what is the state of court, you know, what, state of corporate and mainstream media and the influence on independent voices on a free and open internet in your opinion? Um, there is, oh my gosh, there's so much going on right now. Yeah. And, and it's, 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 it's right now. I know there's a lot of concern and a lot of fear about a lot of different things, but I am <laughs> as much as we cover organizers and activism and these issues going on, I think we ourselves are going to have to be at the forefront. Um, I know many people already work and do other things or whatever, but I think in terms of making sure that the internet stays open, accessible, and, and free to the extent to the extent that it is you know, free to use, I think we are really going to have to be among those leading the charge to make sure it stays that way. Um, that, you know, uh, I'm just thinking about, you know, back during the, the campaign cycle, like during the primary, the Secretary Clinton had talked about, you know, her idea for a new Manhattan project, working with Silicon Valley um, tech folks and and, 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 and and government officials to, to create this new program and, and then finding ways to restrict access. And I understand the concern about, you know, wanting to fight terrorism and things like that. But the problem is, you know, with the way that, you know, whether the government or mainstream, you know, sources and companies and think people who lobby for things like this are able to use that then to silence opposition internally, to silence other people who are doing, you know, trying their best to build out their own means of informing people. Um, my concern with, with any type of whether Donald Trump tries to do it with whomever it is, my concern regardless of party is, 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 is the silencing of voices, the silencing of opposition. And I really do think that we, you know, as a, as a, as a, as an industry, right. need to band together um, to make sure that we're protecting the ability, not just our ability to continue to do what we're doing, but whether it's the, the high school kid, you know, who wants to talk about whatever issue is affecting them um, in their, their blog or their, their, their podcast that they decide to do, or, or whomever. I mean, we need to make sure that w that we're on the right side of things. And, you know, I'm not interested in just making sure that there is a way for me to continue to do what I'm doing, regardless of where everyone else. Like, if we all, we all got it. If I'm not, if we're all not free to do our work, then I can't be free, right? I mean, exactly. the same thing yeah. about we deal with injustice in real life. So, um, yeah, yeah I true. mean, there, there, it's definitely something that we need to, I mean, whether we consider ourselves activists or not, mm -hmm. Like, I really do think that these issues that definitely impact our industry are things that need to be at the forefront and we need to be um, well-versed, prepared to, 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 to fight and to, to help rally folks around the cause. Um, That's great. Because independent media, I would say without independent media, mm -hmm. you know, I'm just thinking about like Standing Rock, right? Like Standing Rock, Flint, there's so many different things that independent media, the stuff going on in, in East Chicago, Indiana, there's so many things that people would not really know about had independent media and then people on social media and organized on the ground had not been hammering on first. And we can't let that type of stuff be silenced at all. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Noah. It was great. Uh, you came straight from the, the, the march uh, in Atlanta, and uh, you know we appreciate you coming in and talking to us about it and, and answering I appreciate questions. you. Thank you. All right. Well, uh, and of course, you're welcome to stay for the breakout groups if you want to, or uh, we'll talk to you later uh, online. So either way. Well, I will again. talk to you later online because right. I, have, I have angry kids who want to eat. Oh, yeah, I hear that. <laughs> so thank you All so right. much. I appreciate you. Have a good night. All right. Bye-bye. Thanks, Noah.
Thank you. All right, so now we will break into groups. Now, when we're in our groups, what we're going to be talking about is a couple questions, you know, to ask ourselves and to talk about what did we hear from uh, these great panelists? Uh, what are our reactions to what we've heard? What does a 21st century media cooperative look like to me or you, however you want to look at it? Uh, and what would be a takeaway that would that you know you would talk to others about regarding independent media? And how do we best increase the reach of independent media as a cooperative? So we're going to go ahead and start breaking those out. Ryan's going to help us out with that. And um, we'll I'll talk to you soon. I'll be checking in and giving everyone a two-minute-ish warning about uh, when we get down to that. Uh, so we'll go ahead and start doing that now. And thank you, everyone, for being here. I hope you enjoyed the panelists. Hey guys. Hey, what's up, Nico? Hello. Uh, Nothing. Yep, I can hear you guys. This is Mitch. Hey. I'm going to stay muted until I need to speak. Hey everybody, thanks for joining us with the Global Engagement Network's Gen's monthly conference uh, called Gen Monthly. And people are in their breakout groups right now. They are discussing um, what does the 21st century media cooperative look like. So hang tight for just a second and we will be right back with our wrap up. Today we're going to be uh, looking at a conversation on independent media, the inauguration, which include your attendance, protesters, and organized initiatives. Um, we're going to take a look at the spectrum of organizing, the right to peacefully assemble, protests and activism, and whether going mainstream is good or bad, and a whole bunch more. And hopefully we'll be talking to you out there as well. Um, and as always, we have uh, John Spalding working in the back. How are you today, John? I'm good. How are you? Hopefully everybody can hear I'm me. Good. We can hear you good. So hopefully uh, let us know out there if um, anyone's too loud or quiet. All right, guys, we'll just bring that back. I don't know if we're supposed to, are we going to be told the questions again or I don't remember what they were. reach okay are you do we start now or are you guys gonna like tell us to start or okay uh, i uh i guess i, I okay <laughs> i wasn't i wasn't sure but, okay well, I mean, I've, I guess I can answer the first question first, because what comes to my mind um, right away is um, like, but all of them had in some way said to build the community and to, um, you know, for independent media to help each other and build on the network that we that we are forming, networks that we are forming. So I think that's really cool. My reaction to that is that's exactly what we're doing. So we're on the right track. Yeah, and I think that ex exactly what is a twenty first century co op 
is about. And I mean, to reach out, we can specifically say that's exactly what we're doing. And I think, like they said, that's what people are looking for now. Like younger people are don't care about, like Armin said, they don't care about uh, CNN or whatever. They're looking for news online. So if they're not, if there's no sources of, you know, independent media talking and about politics, and they're just going to, you know, look online for stuff that's non-politics related and look at that and then, you know, become more disinterested interested so but now is a time where people really can't be so they're like seeking out the information so and it is there you just have to like find it and you know find who's telling the truth go ahead and jump in does anybody else have any thoughts on that yeah. Um, well, again, I, like I said before, I, I listened to Nicole Sandler and Tim Black. I, I listened to <clears throat> several other independent media. Uh, another one is Bob Kincaid with the Head On Radio Network. And uh, I, I wish we could have got him too. But uh, um, going back to uh, what what is common with, with them, we really need to get these older uh, more experienced, more polished. And I really got to emphasize the polish. As stupid as that sounds, on on some of the other networks I've I learned, the people are uh, passionate, understand what they want to present, but the way they present it uh, really is probably going to block them from ever drawing a large number of customers. Um, there is this relationship, just like there's relativity in physics, there's relativity in, in the brain pattern of how we understand and trust things. Uh, and it's always a three-way. Uh, uh, trust is never between two objects. Trust is always, as it's bounced off, a, a third-party example. And your trust of the third party is really what gets uh, gets your trust of the, of the direct one you're trying to trust. For, for instance, um, a, a lot of endorsements for people make you say, well, all of these people trust that person. That's where you give your trust. You have to have some some relative means of uh, uh, judging that person in, in order to, to trust them. Well, a lot of times we don't have the network to trust people. So what happens is we judge them by their presentation. How professional do they sound? How many spaces do they have? What ums and ahs do they say? Oh, what untruths have we heard them say? As actually, you can absolutely lie to somebody as long as you come across as you're um, very uh, knowledgeable on the subject. Yeah. All right, well, I'm going to have John come in, and I'm going to go over to another room. So you guys can feel free to keep talking if you're if you want. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks again. Hi, John. <laughs> good. Hey there, pretty good, pretty good. We had cookies in our discussion. <laughs> um, can you refresh us on that? Just the... That's the thing. Yeah, well, we were talking about those things. Um, yeah, so, <laughs> um, yeah, I think, I think like, um, we didn't really talk too much about what a 21st media co-op means. Um, I don't know, do you guys have any thoughts on that? Uh, 
I think I like really know what it looks like at this point. So yeah, that's probably why. <laughs> I think I, I think that the, there's a tie in there because um, we we talked a lot tonight about uh, corporate media and how the media is sort of beholden to their corporate sponsors. And, you know, there can be problems on different levels. I think for uh, a cooperative media is beholden to each other, like on all levels. It's uh, it's about like participatory democracy. And when you make that into a media, you can, um, you know, it's from the it's from the ground up. So I think that that it's it's a it's a it could be a very hopeful answer to what we are being given as far as the media goes. Um what I, what, like, from my personal takeaway, like, from uh, some of the dis discussions tonight, it's like, there is some ambiguity over, like, what is this whole fake news thing? Like, it could, it could mean a few different things, because we get fake news from the corporate media, we get fake news from, from other, you know, different sources, and it's like, I don't know, there's so many different angles to it. I think the successful media co-op is what Tim was saying about uh, expanding your reach and everything. I think that's how you make a successful co-op too, is by bringing in all the different voices and opinions too. So it's not you're not limiting yourself to a one-sided point of view. Um, I really liked what he said about you know you you brought in in order to draw in an audience or draw in members. And then when you have that audience, then you can start to sprinkle in your, the things that you believe strongly about. I like that piece. Yeah, I really like that too. And, um, Personally, like, I like the idea of, yeah, like drawing in, like, cause we don't, you don't want to talk in an echo chamber just amongst people who already have your own opinions. You want to have like a real, a real like discussion, like that involves plurality of opinion, you know? And yeah, so to do outreach, you kind of got to get beyond your own comfort zone or your own, you know, personally held beliefs systems. And yeah, so I think that getting creative with uh, with outreach is like really important. I just don't know if we're going to ever reach beyond our own comfort zones. I think that's what the media has become now. Everybody has a niche. So unfortunately, you know, the niche people like Fox, they're going to stick with the Fox type things throughout their lives and their media experience. That's all they're going to look for. I mean, if we can cross over and bring some of those people to a more progressive side, great, but I don't know. I don't think that's what most people are assuming anymore that's going to happen. We're all put ourselves in our own little boxes, for better or worse. But that could be the, be that in could, other words, I don't know. That could be the role of independent media, though. I mean, you're right about how you know the Fox and MSNBC of the world are, you know, entrenched in who watches and follows. Independent media is so new that in, in forming a cooperative like that, if you take that into account and you say you don't want to be like that, I, I, there's at least the potential and the drive to want to present fair and honest information that doesn't necessarily have to be unavailable to either side. I would question your statement about independent media being new. Independent media has been around for hundreds of years. Yeah. Well, it may not be in the form of internet and blogging, but it, whether it was zines or whether it was union newspapers or people playing songs and passing songs along, uh, there's been media that wasn't controlled by corporations for years. The problem is that now the, it's hard to just get into that airwave with all the other messages that are out there. Yeah, and and this is the internet definitely gives you the quickest and fastest and broadest outreach. I guess that's what I meant. The new independent media, new age indie media.
All right, guys, I just got an update from Sean that the other group is wrapped up answering some of these questions. So we're going to bring it back to the big group and have a little discussion about what we talked about and then get everybody out of here. So sit tight. I'm going to get rid of these breakout groups. All right. Hello, everyone. Everyone should be coming back into this main room now. And uh, we're quickly going to be touching in with the groups to see what we heard. And uh, do we have everyone in now? Let's see here. Um, all right. Looks like it. So let's go ahead and go to the first group. Um, let's see. Let's go to the group with uh, Mickey Mitchell and I believe... And Nico was in that group. Uh, let's go ahead and hear, do you have a representative from that group that wants to tell us a little bit about what uh, you guys talked about? I can do that. All right. Um, <laughs> uh, I think we uh, came to the agreement that we are definitely trying to do right. exactly what uh, these uh, professional independent media people uh, were saying, which is build the community and support each other and uh, promote each other and um, find these little help people find these sources of information that are giving us um, nuggets of truth from you know local areas and from straight from the people's mouths about specific issues um, we also heard um, Mitchell talk about some kind of specific structures of how your brain understands things um, you know about um, echo chambers and about how you know other people with other other views, um, we need to talk to them. Um, and if you want to, if you guys want to fill in a little more about Mitchell, um, Mitchell, if you want to jump in real quick, uh, you can. Um, but it was basically about how we understand uh, truth and news. Mitchell, did you have something to add? Oh, I don't want to delay the whole thing the whole night. <laughs> uh, basically, uh, um, uh, uh, I, I, I really suggest anybody has anything, watch Nicole or listen to Nicole's uh, podcast. And uh, uh, there's all kinds of uh, professional tricks that she does in that. And uh, basically, how you present uh, is more involved with whether people trust you, what you say than actually what you're saying. You can say absolute gibberish, and people will sit there uh, listening as though it's the truth if you present yourself well enough. She also has little tricks in it, like how, how many long into the show people can go at that restroom break. Because if people get up and go to the restroom, obvious, there's a really high chance they're not going to come back and be engaged with the show. Great points. Uh, Great points. The other thing I brought up was uh, people are happy, beings of habit, and uh, you have to get people used to coming to you first as your source of where to go to get the rest of the news. Uh, so as, as you have your trust point by building your stuff and doing the things with Jeff, she has a very loyal audience of people who come to her and look. You also see other other professionals come to her and see what she says because sometimes they comment about her. Uh, but the thing is, uh, learn from her. Well, we almost lost her, and we almost lost that chance to learn from her. Sure. All right. Well, thank you very much. Um, how about Allison's group? Anyone from that group want to tell us a little bit about what they talked about?
make sure you're unmuted. Hey, Sean, uh -huh. this is John. I came into the yeah. group a little bit late, but one thing that, that uh -huh. stuck out to me from their discussion um, and what we talked about was that independent media has been around for a long time and started with like old newsboys and, and just sending out pictures and, and, and old papers that weren't corporate influenced and, and programs and things like that. So it's understanding that that kind of where we're headed or where at least where I understood that was with what we're focusing on is micro content, micro content and social broadcasting and just kind of how the internet can help play a role to bridge that community and that those old independent news sources are, are definitely areas that we can tap into as we're building the co-op and, uh, and, and trying to see uh, and bring in some of those past perspectives as well. Great. Yeah, that's, you know, and that's basically what we were trying to do with this conference. So that's great news. Well, I thank you everyone for coming and joining us and joining in on the conversation. Of course, Gen Monthlies, there'll be uh, lots of these uh, coming forward, uh, one at the end of every month. Uh, next month will be on civil rights. So make sure that you're looking forward to that. Uh, Global Engagement Network, uh, our website is in the works right now to get that back up. Until then, you can always find us on Twitter at GenCO underscore OP for Gen Co-op. And of course, on Facebook, just look up uh, Global Engagement Network. And we have Gen Weeklies that we do every Tuesday night. And those, uh, you know, that we do politics. And just like, you know, we were talking about with Nicole and some of the other panelists, we'll uh, throw in some other stuff in there to, to, to uh, get off politics every now and then. But we'll definitely still focus on the important stories, especially the ones not being told by mainstream media. And so we welcome you to join us every Tuesday night for that. And, uh, you know, participants, you know, we, we, uh, that are here and people watching online, we will uh, feel free to sign up for our email list uh, we, and subscribe to YouTube and that sort of thing. We will be putting together comments and questions and that sort of thing that came up uh, during this uh, great uh, conference. And we will be, you know, putting together maybe like a, an action plan towards either next week's meeting or next year's meeting on independent media and, uh, and you know onward so look forward to that and go ahead and sign up and subscribe to make sure that you get all that extra content that we'll be doing of course also we'll be cutting this into segments so you know your favorite panelists you can share their um q a with them that i did and uh, all that great stuff so thanks again for coming thanks everyone that registered thanks for everyone watching on youtube uh, and this is the Global Engagement Network Independent Media Monthly Conference, and thanks for joining. Great. Thanks, Sean. Just for everybody, you can see I'll just do a close with uh, our last uh, slide. This is what we're going to be doing uh, this year uh, with the Global Engagement Network. So uh, please sign up, follow us on YouTube, and get involved. And we will get your opinion on air and into all of our work uh, for this year. So uh, I would say thanks, everyone. We really appreciate you guys being here. And remember, uh, next month's conference is on civil rights. So thanks, everyone. This is the Global Thank Education you. Network. And Sean, awesome work tonight. And we will see everybody uh, for Gen Weekly this Tuesday at 10 p.m. Eastern.